Praise the Lord. I want to take this opportunity to greet you in the name of Jesus. What a wonderful day, what a wonderful time. I bring greetings from Pastor Peter and Pastor Irene Kasirivu and from the entire Gaba community family. We are here to continue with what we have been talking about, the beautiful topic on thriving in crisis, thriving in hard times or tough times. I know it has not been easy, but today I want to close this by bringing a very wonderful topic, which we shall pick from the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. I just want to read for you, and this is how it goes. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you, Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. God is our everlasting strength. I just want us to pray as we go through this word. Father, we thank you for this great day. I thank you for the audience. Thank you for everybody listening to me. Lord, as we go through this topic, I pray for understanding. I pray for revelation. I pray that somebody's life will not remain the same. I pray that somebody will be encouraged. Somebody will be motivated. Somebody will be uplifted. I pray that somebody's faith will go to another level. I pray that somebody's heart will have the peace of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. So today, I, I, I was so much blessed to read this verse. You will keep him in perfect peace, the one whose mind is stayed on you. So I want to talk about embracing the perfect peace of God in time of crisis. Somebody may ask me a question, is it really possible? This is what we want to talk about. I want to say Isaiah is one of the most quoted books in the Old Testament. He is one of the major prophets, and the name Isaiah means the Lord is my salvation. I read a little bit of history about this book. Uh, Isaiah prophesied at a time in history when Israel and Judah were experiencing a great prosperity and a great power. And because of that, you find that Christianity or the moral life, their moral lives had declined. Not only that, they began to worship idols. Not only that, the rich oppressed the poor. People were in carnal pleasures. People left their children, their families for carnal pleasures. The priests had fallen. Prophets had become drunkards. So this was the time this prophet came to prophesy. And I wanted to know, people were having false peace, false uh, security. People were depending on their riches, on their wealth. But today, as I talk about embracing the perfect peace of God, I want you to know this peace does not come from any of those things. This peace I'm talking about does not come from having money. You may have a lot of money, but you don't have that peace. This perfect peace of God I'm talking about is not by traveling the globe. You may travel all over the world, but you don't have the peace. This inner peace I'm talking about. The peace I'm talking about is not God from fame. You may be a very famous person. We have seen very famous people, but without peace. It does not come from having high education. Education is wonderful, but education alone cannot give you this perfect peace. This peace does not come from professionalism. You may be a great professional, but you don't have the peace. It is not having a relationship. There are those who are thinking, I think if I began a relationship today, if I got a boyfriend, a girlfriend today, I will have great peace. That alone cannot give you peace. What is this perfect peace that I'm talking about? I one day had a beautiful story that I want to share with you. There was a fine art, a fine art examination. This was the final examination where somebody wanted to get 100% fine art. And they told the students to draw peace. Draw peace. Just like I want to ask you. If you were in this class and you want to get 100%, what would you draw? 
This is what some of the students drew. One drew a mountain with sky blue cloud touching the ground. To him, that was peace. Another one drew somebody greeting, two people greeting each other. And to them, that was peace. Somebody sleeping. But one student did something so amazing. One student drew a waterfall, a waterfall like Owen Falls Dam in Uganda. I know wherever you are, you could be having a waterfall. So this student drew a waterfall and underneath the bridge, there was a bird, a small bird that had built a nest and the bird was sleeping. The water was falling but the bird was sleeping and that student got 100%. So when we talk about perfect peace, we are not talking about absence of chaos. We are not talking about absence of troubles. We are not talking about absence of challenges. We are not talking about absence of situations around you. You are surrounded by many things. There are chaos all over, but inside you, you have the rest of mind. You have the inner peace. You have that stability. You have restfulness. The ability to rest in your heart amidst challenges. The ability to sleep well amidst challenges. The ability to have the serenity of mind amidst the challenges. In fact, it is being healthy, having a healthy mind, a healthy heart amidst the challenges. I want you to know we have been going through a lot of restlessness. Everywhere you see the news we hear, all over the world, it has been so challenging. At our homes, it has been so challenging. But the question is, are we able to have peace even when we are going through that? Are we able to sleep? even when we are going through that? Are we able to have that great peace of mind when we are going through that? So when I went through this book, I saw beautiful points. Isaiah is advising us. He says, God will, will keep this person in perfect peace. This person whose mind is stayed on him. This person who has made it ha a habit, a habit to stay your mind on God to trust in God. In other words, if you are to experience the peace of God, you need somebody to depend upon. You need somebody to rely on. You need somebody to cling on. You need somebody to surrender your life to. And guys, we have been running to many things. We have already seen that nothing on earth can give us this perfect peace. Whatever we want is a shaky ground is a shaky ground, is not firm enough. You can try people, but after two days, they give up on you. You know, whatever we have can fall off. But Isaiah says, we need to trust in the Lord because the Lord is our everlasting strength. Another version says, for the Lord, for the Lord is our everlasting rock. Many times in scriptures, David is quoting God as the everlasting rock. I want to read for you Psalms 18 verse 2. Psalms 18 verse 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. What a beautiful scripture. Look at all these words Isaiah is, I mean, David is talking about. Number one is talk, calling God the rock. The Lord is my rock. Number two, my fortress. Number three, my strength. Number four, my deliverer. My God, my shield the horn of my salvation. So if you have God as all those things, the guy says, I cannot be shaken. 
What is unique about the rock? The rock is immovable. The rock is very strong. The rock is dependable. Psalms 125, it says, let me just read for you. Psalms 125, verses 1 and 2. This is one of the most beautiful scriptures in the Bible about trusting the, God, the Lord. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. You know, Isaiah says, one reason we need to trust in God is because God is an everlasting rock. God is our everlasting rock. New King James Version says, is our everlasting strength. Great peace you will give him whose mind is stayed on you. In other words, you make it a habit. You purpose to. You make it a routine to trust in God the rest of your life. You surrender your life to him. You give the entirety of your life to him. You make him your fortress. You make him a place of refuge. When you're surrounded, you go to him. I like what Proverbs puts it. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Can you imagine? There's only safety in God. Praise the Lord. Another thing, the, day, the man says, so I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Why do we need to trust in God? Why do we need to call upon God? It is only God who can save us from our enemies. So point number two I want to share with you, if you are to experience the perfect peace of God, is be anxious for nothing, but in everything and prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. There's a version that says, don't worry about anything, but you pray about everything. You know, every time we go through challenges, the first thing we run to is to worry. Worry is one of the deadliest weapons of the enemy. One thing he wants you to go through is worry. When you have challenges at home, he wants you to worry. With children, he wants you to worry. When you're lacking something, he wants you to worry. Worry is a premature killer. Worry is a thief of the faith in the Most High God. Worry can kill you. Worry causes a lot of side effects. Worry can make you have the heart diseases, heart conditions, ulcers, because of worry. Worry can make you die at an early age when God has not called you. So worry is something that we need to guard against. I, I liked what a certain man of God said. He said, don't worry about two things. Number one, don't worry about what you can do. Some people worry about what they can do. If what you can do requires money and you have the money, go ahead and do it. If what you can, what you're going through needs talking, go ahead and meet somebody and you talk. So don't worry about what you can do. If it is within your means, go ahead and sort it out. Number two, don't worry about what you cannot do. What you cannot do does not belong to you. What you cannot do belongs to God. I remember the old story that all of us could have heard of a certain man who was carrying a heavy laden, a heavy load, and he was walking on foot. So many people bypassed him as he was struggling with his luggage. But one sympathetic person came from behind. He was driving a bus. So he saw this man, and the guy was tired. His neck was going inside. He was suffocating. He was almost dying because of the luggage. Then this man stops and gives him a lift. When they gave him a lift, he entered the bus, 
seated in the bus and remained carrying the luggage. So the guy drove for a short distance, he saw through the mirror, and he saw the guy who was seated carrying the luggage. He stopped the bus. He said, how can you do such a thing? I carried you so that you can have relief, that you can have your luggage down. And you are seated in the bus and carrying the luggage. And I think this teaches us a lot. This is the same thing that's happening with many of us. We are born again. We are in Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. The one who says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We are in this man, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the giver of peace. But our hearts are worried. Our hearts are worried. You are a born again Christian, but you are worried. No, worry should not be our portion as Christians. Worry should not be our portion. I want you to know there are two words here I have seen in the book of Philippians. It says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. And says when you do that, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. This is what I am talking about. I'm talking about the peace beyond the description. This peace does not come from traveling globally. This peace does not come from fame. This peace does not come from education. This peace does not ca come from having a profession. It is not, does not even come from having a relationship. This peace, number one, comes from having a personal relationship with God. A personal relationship with God. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Justification is a judicial term. It means acquittal. The criminal is being set free from the guilt. The criminal that deserved to die, that deserved to be punished, to be given severe punishment, is acquitted in courts of law. The judge tells him, you're free. So number one, if we are to have the perfect peace of God, you need to be acquitted. You need to be forgiven of your sins. You need to have a personal relationship with God, a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Number two, if we are to have the perfect peace of God, according to the book of Isaiah, where we read, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. We need to cultivate a habit of trusting in the Lord, making it a habit, making it a routine. It should become part of us that you make the Lord your place of refuge. Another version says, you will, for the Lord is our everlasting rock. The Lord is our everlasting rock. You know, to trust simply means to rely on, to depend upon, to cling on, to stick to. It means to come out of your keeping and you surrender your life to his keeping. You are no longer the one keeping yourself. He's the one keeping you. That's what it means to trust. To trust means to submit under somebody, to let go of yourself and allow him to take control of your life. So according to Isaiah, he says, for the Lord is our everlasting rock. I like that, our everlasting rock. There are about five things, four or five things about the rock. You know, number one, the rock is immovable. The rock is immovable. Another thing about the rock is durability. The rock is durable. So God has been a figure. The rock has been figurative of God. God is our rock. In the book of Psalms 18 verse 2, 
David is saying, the Lord is my rock and fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust and my shield and the horn of my salvation. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So you see, David is calling the Lord my rock. Look at all these things David is talking about. He's my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, he's my God, he's my strength, he's my shield, he's my horn of salvation. He says, therefore, I will call upon him. So, number one, if you are to embrace the peace, the perfect peace of God, you need to rely on him. You need to make it a habit to trust in the Lord. Just come out of your keeping. Don't take care of yourself. Surrender your life to God. Allow him to take care of you. Always make him your habitation. I know, I, I like the example of young children. When, when a child has issues, a child runs to the parent, runs to the father, runs to the mother. So we need to make God our run to place. When you don't have where to go, run to the Lord. We are in a situation where people are looking for where to run to. People are looking for what to cling on, what to hold on. People are looking for where to go. I'm telling you, but all those things are shaky. You know, relationships are shaky. You know, people can let down. There's nothing which is permanent on earth. And that's why Isaiah, Prophet Isaiah, was advising the people. He said, number one, make your mind stay on God. Make the Lord your, your, your habitation. Make the Lord your fortress. Make the Lord your strength. Make the Lord your everything. Number two, if we are to experience the perfect peace of God, we need to pray. We need to pray. David said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I want to add with the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. This is a very common scripture but very powerful. Very common scripture but powerful. The book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Let me read for you. 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with the thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. And the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Other version says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. So what is prayer? Prayer is, is depending on God. Prayer is sharing our hearts on God. Prayer is running to God for refuge, for rescue. The Bible says uh, in the book of Isaiah, in the book of, uh, the book of Psalms, I will pour my heart to God in time of trouble so that the Lord may deliver me. The Lord will rescue me. So when we are surrounded, when we have issues, when you don't know where to run to, I want you to know, make it a habit to trust in God. Number two, make it a habit to pray. Pour your heart. It says with the prayer and the supplication. Go and tell God whatever you want. Go and share your heart with God. Go and cry to God. David says that I will call upon him and will deliver me from all my enemies. So guys, I want you to know there are two parts of our lives that we need to guard jealously. Number one, you need to guard your heart. Number two, you need to guard your mind. These are two important parts of our lives. The Bible says, out of the heart comes issues of life. Out of the heart comes issue of, of life. Which means the heart needs to be peaceful. The heart 
need to have the rest. The heart needs to be still. Number two, the mind. The mind is the seat of your thoughts and your plans. The seat of your thoughts and your plans. In other words, if your heart and your mind are troubled, then the whole life is in chaos. The whole life is in problems. When the heart and the mind are not at peace, then you have chaos around you. At home, you will have challenges. At place of work, you will have challenges. At such a time like this, when people are home, when some people don't have what to do, when businesses have fallen, when many people don't have jobs, when the students are at home, when life looks to be so challenged, I'm telling you, with a troubled mind and a troubled heart, you will have family violences. They'll be fighting all the time. They'll be blaming each other all the time. There'll be wrangles, war after war, restlessness. I'm telling you, we need to guard our minds. We need to guard our hearts. So it says, when we learn to trust in God, when we learn to pray, the peace of God will guard our minds. The peace of God will garrison our minds and our hearts. We shall have peace from inside. People will see you and wonder, why, why do you look the way you are? People expect you to cry, but you're not crying. People expect you to be sleepless, but you are sleeping. People will expect you to be, you know, to be moving up and down, but you're very stable. Why? Because you have a personal relationship with God. Because you know where your strength comes from. You have made God your habitation. You have made God your strength. You have made God your everything. Number two, you have made God your running place. You're running to place. When you are surrounded, you run to God. Somebody says, don't worry about two things. Don't worry about two things. Number one, don't worry about what you can do. In time of chaos, in time of challenges, in a time like this of the pandemic, worry, the enemy uses worry. Worry is one of the deadless weapons of the enemy. Worry will rob your faith in God. Worry will make you move in unbelief and doubts. Worry will make you have heart problem. So that's why the, these two people, Isaiah and Paul, are advising us. He says, number one, make God your habitation. No matter why do people worry? Why do people worry? Because they feel they have nowhere to run to. They feel they have nowhere to go. They have nobody who can rescue them. But the advice is, make God. If you make God your habitation, if you make God a place of your rescue, if you make God a place where you can run to, you will have the peace of God. Because God is dependable. Because God never lets down. Because God is faithful. Because God is good. Because God answers prayers. So number two, pray. Pray. Make prayer your habit. Make it a habit to pray. Pray in the morning. Pray in the noon time. And pray when the sun goes down. I want to end with this scripture in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4 and verse 16. It says, Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So in time of need, we are in time of need. We are in time of need. Some people need what to eat. Some people need health. Some people need school fees. Some people need a number of issues. You have projects. You, you have plans. There are things you want to accomplish. You have dreams. You know, people have plans. So it says, instead of worrying, let us come to God. Let us come to God. It reminds me of this beautiful song. Cast all your cares upon him. Cast your burdens upon him. For he cares about you. For he cares about you. So, brethren, I want you to know, God is our habitation. Make the Lord your trust. Make the Lord your trust. Make it a habit. Make it a habit to just trust in God. Make it a habit to pray. Make it a habit to pray. Pray in the morning. Pray in the noontime. Pray when the sun goes down. 
all the time you are surrounded, go and share. Pour your heart to God. Uh, I want to pray with you that the Lord will strengthen you. I want to pray with you. I don't know what you're going through, but I want you to know that God is good. God is faithful. I have a wonderful story to end with. This story is about fine art students. They were going through their final exams, and each student wanted to get 100%. So they were told to draw peace. Just like I want to ask you, if you are a fine art student and you want to get 100%, if you are told to draw peace, what would you draw? One student drew a mountain with a sky blue, with a, a sky blue cloud touching the earth. Another one drew a lake. Another one drew people greeting each other. Another one drew somebody sleeping. But there was one particular student who touched the life of the examiner. This student drew a waterfall, like Owen Falls Dam. I guess all of us know what a waterfall is. That is where there's a bridge and the water is falling, the waterfall. There are many falls in different parts of the world. And what happened? Underneath the bridge, there was a tiny bird which had built a nest. And that bird was sleeping. The water was gushing. The water was falling with very high speed, high volume. But the bird was sleeping. Just like Jesus sleeping uh, uh, when there was storm, amid the storm. So this is what we are talking about. Perfect peace does not mean there are no issues. You are surrounded. You have issues all around. But because you know whom you trust in, because you have somebody you trust in, because you have somebody to run to, you have that perfect peace. Your heart is rest at rest amid these challenges. Your heart, you sleep and you dream and you snore amid these challenges. This is what I'm praying for your family. This God is desire for you, children of God. This God is desire for you, every family that's watching at me. This is what God is desiring for all of us who are here, the young people who are here. Let's make God our habitation. Let's make God our place of rescue. All the time, let's run to him we shall experience the peace of God. I want to pray with you that the Lord will bless you. I want to pray with you that you may experience the peace of God. May you begin to experience the peace of God, even from now. May the peace of God be your portion. May you open your heart and begin to experience the peace of God. May your life be at peace with God. When you have that peace, your mind and your heart will be at rest. You will be able to make the right decisions you will be able to move on. You will be unstoppable. You will, be, you, will be, you will move from strength to strength. You will see great things in Jesus' name. Yes, we have come to the end of our service and there are numbers on the screen. And I want to invite you to give back to God through your tithers and your offerings. Well, let us pray and believe God for your giving. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. We bless you and we magnify you. We thank you, Lord, that you bless those who give to you cheerfully. And so as we bring our fruits, King of glory, God, our tithers, our offerings to you, we pray for your blessing upon the givers, Heavenly Father. And we also want to remember those that are struggling in this season, struggling financially because their businesses are down, struggling financially because their work is no more, struggling financially, King of glory, God, because of so many circumstances or even loss of a loved one. We pray that the Lord will come out for you. We pray that the Lord will intervene in the affairs of your family, the affairs of your life. We pray that God will arise and his name be glorified in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.